one of the the most common reasons when when we have people who have a lot of canker sores, you know, it, whether they test positive for celiac or just we think it's gluten sensitivity or we don't have a full full positive celiac test, but when they take away gluten, they often will will, will clear up. Welcome to the Doctor's Pharmacy. I'm Dr. Mark Hyman. That's pharmacy with an F, F-A-R-M-A-C-Y. Welcome to this special episode called House Call, where we talk about some tough issues that affect so many people that are really not well dealt with with traditional medicine. And today we're going to talk about the mouth, cold sores and canker sores, which are annoying. They're not life-threatening, but they can make you miserable. And they're they're not too pretty either for, for people. So today we have with us our physician from the Ultra Wellness Center, Dr. Liz Boehm, who's my friend and colleague for over two decades. She's a uh, an incredible physician, family doctor, trained in nutritional medicine, also a registered dietitian and an exercise physiologist, what I'd love all doctors to be. And uh, she is teaching all over the world functional medicine. She's now part of our GI course, which is great at the Institute for Functional Medicine. And she's got her own uh, wonderful CD called Breast Wellness because she went through breast cancer and has a lot to say about it and a lot to teach. So welcome, Liz, back to House Call. Thank you, Mark. It's great to be with you. Fantastic. So let's get right into it. Canker sores. What are canker sores? Uh, We've all probably had them one time or another. Why are they a problem? And what do they signify? And how do we think about them differently in functional medicine than traditional medicine? Absolutely. So canker sores are those ulcers, those sores that you get in your mouth. They're usually um, at the side of your mouth, you know, by your cheek, inside of your cheek, that is, underneath your tongue. Um, those are some typical places for them. And uh, uh, and they are um, about three to five millimeters in size. And they are a sore that comes, if you look at them, they'll look like a round circle. Um, they're, they're, they're reddish. Sometimes they'll have like a yellow uh, coating. coating on it. Yeah. And they hurt like heck. They hurt like heck. Yes. And and like you said, most of us have had them at least once or twice. And having one once or twice is not a big deal, right? Or, mm. or even more than that. But what we get concerned about or what we want to talk a little bit about are those people that are getting lots and lots of canker sores. And could that mean that there's something we need to be looking into and, and thinking about? Yeah, I mean, I think that's right. I think, you know, in traditional medicine, we go, oh, well, canker sore is not a big deal. You know, swish your mouth with like, tetracycline and Benadryl was the cocktail we used to use. Yep. Uh, and that'll help reduce the pain, inflammation. But it really wasn't ever, ever a conversation about, well, what was the cause of these? And how do we diagnose the root cause and make it so people don't get them anymore? Absolutely. And you know- um, And what does a functional medicine doctor think when they see a canker sore? You know, if, if it, again, if it's been like, if it's an isolated incident, it might not be a big deal at all. But if there ha- if people are getting them all the time, or even a couple times a month, or even you know um, uh, five or six times a year, you makes you want to ask that question: Why? What could be going on? And it, there could be many things from from celiac disease mm-hmm. um, to uh, 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 an impact in the, the immune system not working properly to eating a food that causes inflammation for your body. So celiac disease, it would be gluten, but there's other foods that for people can be in inflammatory for them. It's like a food sensitivity or a food reaction. Definitely, we see it with some food additives. So some food coloring and some food additives, people will get canker sores. Um, there are some uh, uh, more rare situations where people get lots and lots of canker sores, uh, bichettes, uh, they'll get sores in their mouth and other areas of their body. So, you know, that's an autoimmune process. Uh, uh, another autoimmune process, lupus can, can cause some, uh, recurrent sores in the mouth as well. Um, and of course, nutritional deficiencies. You know, it's something I think about all the time. We know B12 deficiencies, B vitamin deficiencies. Um, so I'm thinking when somebody's coming in with recurrent uh, canker sores, those are things I'm thinking about. Yeah. So it could be some of the foods that we're eating or chemi- the chemicals in our food. There's, you know, the yeah. average American eats three to five pounds of food additives a year. And we think, oh, it's a little yeah. additive here. Little. When you add it all up with all the crap we eat, it's three to five pounds. And there are a lot of these things are really immunoreactive. It can be very inflammatory, irritating, uh, and can cause these canker sores. Uh, yeah, but, you, you know, we mentioned also Bichette's and, and lupus. These are autoimmune diseases. 
but what what's really striking to me, and, and and after doing functional medicine for decades, is that so many people with canker sores really have gluten problems. Absolutely. And I remember one of my friends was a Harvard trained doctor who started having really severe recurrent canker sores. We call it aphthystomatitis, but it's like a really nasty, nasty case of this. And it, I said, have you checked yourself for celiac disease? He's like, no. And I'm like, well, check. And he had it and he stopped eating gluten and everything went away. I see that all the time. I mean, that's probably one of the the most common reasons when, when we have people who have a lot of canker sores, you know, it, whether they test positive for celiac or just we think it's gluten sensitivity or we don't have a full full positive celiac test but when they take away gluten they often will will, will clear up which is phenomenal and a wonderful response the other thing you know i was thinking when you were talking about the food additives um, and food coloring, you know, uh, Halloween is a time where kids will get canker sores all the time right after Halloween, you know, all of those, oh, all of that, you know, yeah. the, the candies that have, they're eating so much of it with a lot of additives and, and coloring and stuff. And so, you know, people will notice that that's a time where they get that's a lot true. of them. That's true. You know, I remember uh, when I was really sick with, uh, you know, chronic fatigue and my immune system wasn't working right. And my gut was a mess. Um, I used to get tons of canker sores and it was terrible. I get them in my yeah. tongue, I get them in my cheeks. It was like, it's horrible. Once you start to get things back in balance and fix your gut and your nutritional status really, really makes a huge difference. So tell us about this patient you had. It was a young woman who had, had really bad canker sores. Yeah. You know, I just want to mention one thing about that and then we'll delve into this case. You know, when, when things are out of balance in the digestive system, there's a lot of inflammation in there. And so the ability for the body to digest and absorb your nutrients is much less. And so, and, and the, the oral mucosa, the, 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 the cells in your mouth and the digestive system, you know, need a lot of regular nutrition. So, so many times we see nutritional deficiencies show up first in the mouth and the gut area because they're just getting turned over so quickly. And so, you know, we, you think a lot about those B vitamins that are necessary for healing and zinc that's necessary for healing. So when you mentioned when the body, when your body was depleted, you know, there may have been some just decreased absorption of some nutrients that are that are so necessary. Yeah, I think you're right. And you get those cracking at the corners yes. of your mouth. That's called chelosis. That yep. can be also from B vitamin B vitamins, deficient, yep. deficiencies. Yeah, so yeah, I had that. I mean, it's, it's interesting to see what happens when you yeah. start looking at this stuff. You go, wow, because you teach a whole course on the nutrition physical examination. Yes. Or through looking at various signs on your body, you can pick up nutritional deficiencies that may yeah. be related to some of these things. Yeah. So with Dr. Michael Stone, so that's fun. So yeah, so this um, this woman was a 25-year-old woman who had regular canker sores her, her whole life. She had them as a kid. She had them in her teenage years. She was getting them uh, probably once a month. And sometimes she'd have multiple canker sores. And they were kind of, they were painful and no, no fun, like you know, you mentioned. And, um, and she was always thin. So she was always on the thin side. She had some digestive issues, some diarrhea, some bloating. Um, but otherwise, you know, she was, she was healthy. Oh, she was told she had iron deficiency. So she was low in iron, but otherwise not really anything that would make you think she was ill or, or, um, or sick in, in any way, but she just wasn't, you know, she wanted to kind of deal with these canker sores and came in. And so we decided to test her for celiac disease because, because as we are mentioning, it's gluten and wheat can be a common cause of these canker sores for some people. And it also cause irritable bowel and prevent you from absorbing iron and yep. make you not be able to gain weight, all the things she was exhibiting. Exactly. Exactly. And so, and she tested positive conventionally with regular uh, celiac testing. She was, she was uh, positive. Her tissue transglutaminase was elevated. So we were like, oh my goodness, you have celiac disease. And, um, um, and so it, she stopped it like eating gluten. <laughs> she, it was kind of, she stopped eating gluten and the canker sores went away. And so did her do a bowel and her iron deficiency. <laughs> exactly. And she started gaining weight, I'm sure. She did. You I know, mean, the iron and the weight took a little bit more time, but, but the, but the canker sores and the irritable bowel went away right away. It's pretty amazing when you think about how common this is, you know, because, you know, we've talked a lot about gluten on this podcast, but. You know, even people who don't have celiac, they can have non-celiac gluten sensitivity. So they're not they're not on the full blown celiac numbers on the lab test, but they're they're in that continuum, and they can still have all the same problems. Yes. Uh, and the thing people don't realize is that 
doctors don't realize is that they, they you know, they, they think, oh, the problem you have is canker sores. That's the diagnosis. That's mm-hmm. just not, that's not the diagnosis. That's just a symptom. What's right. the cause? And that's what's so different about functional medicine. It's what we do here at the Ultra Wellness Center that's so unique is we really medical detectives that look at the cause and it may be different for different people. Some people's canker sores might be caused by a food additive yeah. or, 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 or maybe it's because of a food sensitivity or maybe it's gluten or maybe something else. So I think that's really the beautiful thing about functional medicine is we can kind of drill down. Yeah, you want to look for that underlying root cause. And then, you know, if it is more of an autoimmune, if for somebody it's more of an autoimmune condition, then you have to ask that question, why, right? Why do they have this autoimmune condition? What is out of balance in their body? What's triggering it? Um, And we can't always answer those questions, but they're really important questions to ask because that really influences how we treat them. So we're not just treating the the um, outward symptom of the canker sore, but looking for that underlying root cause. Yeah, amazing. And people don't have to suffer from it because it's so annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're terrible. Hey, everybody. It's Dr. Hyman. Thanks for tuning into The Doctor's Pharmacy. I hope you're loving this podcast. It's one of my favorite things to do and introducing you to all the experts that I know and I love and that I've learned so much from. And I want to tell you about something else I'm doing, which is called Mark's Picks. It's my weekly newsletter. And in it, I share my favorite stuff from foods to supplements to gadgets to tools to enhance your health. It's all the cool stuff that I use and that my team uses to optimize and enhance our health. And I'd love you to sign up for the weekly newsletter. I'll only send it to you once a week on Fridays. Nothing else, I promise. And all you have to do is go to drhyman.com forward slash picks to sign up. That's drhyman.com forward slash picks, P-I-C-K-S, and sign up for the newsletter. And I'll share with you my favorite stuff that I use to enhance my health and get healthier and better and live younger, longer. Now back to this week's episode. Let's talk about something else that's very common in the mouth, cold sores, which are way more common even than canker sores. Uh, It affects so many people and it's an embarrassing thing to get. People worry about kissing. Uh, It's just unsightly. And, you know, in functional medicine, there's a lot you can do to actually prevent you from getting these canker, these cold sores. So tell us about uh, why we get them, how how they come, and and what what kind of the story is a little bit about can, uh, cold yeah. sores. I mean, one good thing to recognize because sometimes, uh, uh, you know, cold sores and canker sores can get confusing for people. So canker sores that we started with are not infectious. So you're not going to transmit anything to somebody else if you have canker sores inside your mouth, you know, inside this inside the inside of your cheek, and the, and canker sores won't. Uh, come out on your lips. Uh Okay. So cold sores, cold sores, which typically uh, when you get a reoccurrence of, of cold sores, they typically more, they, you know, they, they can happen inside your mouth, like near your teeth and in certain areas of your mouth, but they often will come out on the lips, right? Right on that that border. Yes. They can go. Yes. And they can come out on your skin too, as well. And, and cold sores are, um, Cold sores are because of the HSV virus, so the herpes simplex virus. And so herpes, typically herpes virus that affects the um, head and neck, like the, the, the mouth area, is herpes simplex virus one. And this is um, infectious, right? We can pass it to one another. Um, in fact, I was reading about 66% of the word, world population has had exposure to has HSV-1 yeah, infection. Yeah. Um, and so it's very common and we can transmit it through kissing, sharing, uh, cups or straws. Um, uh, uh, we can of course, uh, transmit it through sexual contact with other people, but, but even the, the oral herpes HSV one, you know, just close contact with people. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really common and it, and it, and can, you know, usually what happens is you get an initial infection where you yes. get kind of sick. So if you're a kid, you basically get maybe a cold or something, you'll get a sore throat, yep. you'll get maybe sores, uh, and then it goes away, but it doesn't really go away. Right. So with certain viruses, they just sort of linger on. I mean, if you get a cold, you get a cold, it goes away. Herpes stays around for your whole life. Yeah. And it, and it ends up living in the nerves. And then there are certain triggers. Mm-hmm. So what are the kinds of triggers that we see for these cold sores to come out? Yeah. So, it, you know, people will notice when they're stressed, 
So when they're exhausted or stressed or they have another infection, sometimes they will come out. So if the body's depleted in any way, um, sunshine for some people, uh, getting dental work with other for, for some people will also trigger them. Um, and, uh, and, and definitely nutritional depletion. We can talk a little bit more about that. So, you know, so when people are getting lots of these cold sores and they keep, so you mentioned you got, you had the initial infection and then it lays dormant in the nerves and then it, you can get a reactivation, right? It can get reactivated and come out. Um, you can see the cold sore on the mouth, right on the lips. And so when, when that has happening a lot, then you've got to say, well, why is this person's body depleted? Right? Why is their immune system not able to kind of keep yeah. this at bay? Why is it that the that the immune system is not able to keep this virus uh, in the nerves? Right? It, it's it's letting it. It's coming back out in you know and and getting reactivated in the mm -hmm. um, on that person. And we transmit it typically when you have the cold sore, right? But you can transmit it when you're asymptomatic, um, especially like a beef right before a cold sore comes on. Um, there is possibility to transmit it at that time as well. So, so you, you really brought up something super important, which is that our risk of getting recurrent cold sores is directly tied to the state of our immune system. Yes. And, and in functional medicine, you know, it's very different our approach than traditional medicine where you go to your doctor and say, well, how can I boost my immune system? Like, I, I don't know, sleep and eat good and maybe exercise and I don't know, take a vitamin. I mean, there really isn't a whole strategy for how do we create immunoresilience or as our mentor Jeffrey Bland calls, immunorejuvenation. Mm -hmm. And particularly now in the time of COVID and, and the, the increased risk for those whose immune systems aren't working, yeah. Well, it's really important to understand how do you maximize the function of your immune system? Because we're going to get into the specifics of actually how to treat the cold sores when they come or to prevent them. But, but, but the foundation of it really is this whole idea of immunoresilience, immunorejuvenation, and, and supporting our immune system. So what are the strategies from a functional medicine perspective that we use to help uh, rejuvenate someone's immune system and make them more resilient? so critical. It's so critical for, for this, for prevention of these cold sores, but for, as you mentioned, all sorts of viral viruses that you want to prevent or all sorts of infections that we want to prevent. And how can we support our immune system in the best way possible? I mean, we always start with food first because it's so powerful, right? You know, making sure people are getting adequate adequate nutrition, making sure they're getting adequate protein, making sure they're getting adequate minerals, making sure they're able to digest and absorb those things properly, making sure that they're getting adequate zinc, which is so important for the immune system and, um, you know, is in a lot of our foods, but sometimes people get a little deficient. And vitamin D. Vitamin D is important. Vitamin C is important. So, but, but, we, but really it comes down to that good, healthy diet, right? So when, when, um, when people are wasting their calories on foods that are highly processed and refined and low in nutrients, then they're not going to get what the body needs for the immune system to work properly. So, I mean, it really all comes down and to sugar nutritional is density. A huge suppression factor for the immune system, sugar and Absolutely. starch. So if you eat flour or sugar, you're literally shutting down your immune system. Yeah. Right? If, yeah. If we know that when our blood sugar is high, our immune system doesn't work as well. Our natural killer cells don't, don't go out and find those things that they need to get rid of. All aspects of both the, the innate and adaptive immune system don't work well when our blood sugar is high. So mm. balancing the simple act of balancing your blood yeah. sugar is That's critical. Diabetics get so many infections and that yes. are hard to treat infections. Yeah. And of course, the usual things like exercise, sleep, uh, learning, stress reduction techniques, all yeah. that being in nature, all those things are critical. Uh, but there are some really powerful things we can do in addition to that to help people prevent cold sores, which I found very, very effective in my practice. Yeah. Um, you you talked about a woman you, you saw who was a 25-year-old who had these recurrent cold sores and some of the things you did for her. So tell us about her and, and what you did and how we can start to think about approaching these patients. Yeah. So this 25-year-old was... Um, was uh, uh, was trying to stay thin. So she was she was a um, she was working. She'd always worked very hard in terms of her diet to stay thin. And so she was she she restricted her diet. She wasn't. I mean, she wasn't to the point of full blown anorexia, but she was very restrictive. She was very careful, mm. um, you know, with what she ate. 
And so, so her, her calorie intake was a little on the lower end and she always got colds and flus. She was sick all the time. Um, and she regularly, we were getting these cold sores and she was just, she was run down and worn, worn out and, but really frustrated with these cold sores. And, um, she also had some digestive issues. She had some, uh, some, you know, diarrhea and, and, and bloating. Um, and, um, and so when, when we got her history, these reoccurrent cold sores, it made me really go, okay, what is going on with her immune system and what can we do to properly support it? And as I mentioned, because of her digestion and the restriction of her, her calories, I was really concerned about her nutritional status. Mm. You know, I was worried that she was she was having some nutritional insufficiencies that was that were weakening her immune system function. And so, um, you know, we we added in some some zinc. We added in a bunch of vitamin C. We got her vitamin D levels up. We got her on a good multivitamin, some good essential fats. Um, we worked to help her body digest and absorb her food better. Um, but we we also added in some lysine. And and lysine is a really interesting amino acid um, that is very helpful for cold sores. Many people have tried this who've had cold sores. They've read about it on the internet or tried it. And, and they notice also when they come in to see me, they're like, it does really help. And it's it, it works very well to, um, to prevent out, uh, uh, these uh, cold sore outbreaks for mm. people. And typically people will take uh, lysine, which is a, an amino acid building block of protein. They'll take about a thousand milligrams or 500 milligrams twice a day for prevention and and may take up to 3,000 milligrams uh, for for treatment or when they feel an outbreak coming on. And and at the beginning, we often have to give them more and then over time we can lower the amount Mm -hmm. that they need. Because she was so restrictive, we also gave her some general amino acids just just because she needed the baseline amino Mm -hmm. acids to build up her body. And... um, and we really worked with her, our nutritionists worked really well with her to just help her uh, increase, you know, it, you know, increase her intake of her calories and her protein more. And, and what was phenomenal, she didn't gain weight, you know, and we, we often see that, you know, people yeah. kind of get that in their head that they can only eat a certain amount because they'll gain weight if they don't or whatever. And, and, and she didn't, she didn't, um, she didn't gain weight she, at all. She was she was just healthier. Her immune system worked better. Uh, she didn't. She she got out of that that pattern of getting all those recurrent cold sores. She wasn't getting colds or flus as much anymore. You know, she was just um, uh, uh, her immune system was was more resilient. It's amazing, and you know, I think uh, you bring up this whole idea of lysine, and and uh, there are a number of foods that are very high lysine. Uh, one of them is quinoa. Mm-hmm. which is a grain that's uh, from South America. And uh, unfortunately, we're, we're taking it all from the South Americans. So they're all getting obese because they have to switch to rice because they can't afford their quinoa anymore. <laughs> but yeah. but it's a great source of lysine. And what's also interesting is that the, there's, a, there's a relationship between arginine, which is another amino acid, and lysine. Mm-hmm. And so one of the foods that has the highest levels of arginine is almonds. So people, for example, are coming eating a lot of almonds and they keep getting cold sores. I tell them to cut out the almonds and choose other nuts which have less. Yeah, arg- that's a great point. Arginine. And I also had somebody who was taking a, a protein supplement, like they were getting it, uh, like in a it was a it had a protein powder, but some amino acids in it, and it had arginine in it. And so she wasn't getting cold sores for many many years, and then started this protein powder, and and it it shifted that balance that you were talking about, right? Her arginine level went up and that impacts your lysine. So in a, in a sense, her lysine went down and then she started getting the cold sores again. And we realized, aha, it was that protein powder. Yeah, and you can bump up the lysine by taking it as a supplement. So yeah, I think there's some really simple things you can do. And some people do need, who really maybe uh, can't get their systems fully operational, may need an antiviral like Valtrex or others yeah. to help. I'm not opposed to that. And they're generally pretty safe medications. But often when you focus on the things you talked about, which is your un- underlying immune function, which is a whole foods, healthy diet, getting rid of the junk, sugar and processed foods, exercise, sleep, stress reduction, taking the basic things like zinc, lysine, vitamin C and others and probiotics to help your gut immune system can make a huge difference in people's health. So, you know, this this sort of underscores the approach we take in functional medicine, which is not just to treat the symptom or the disease, but treat the soil. And I think in functional medicine, I think of more like being a regenerative farmer than a than a, than a uh, industrial farmer, where we're trying to regenerate the health of the soil, 
so the plants just don't need any chemicals and they don't need any any input the, 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 the soil itself is the source of all the nutrition and the healing that the plants need and i i think that's something we could learn a lot from in medicine and i think we need to move from a you know basically a, an, an agricultural system that is destructive uh, and and uses all these agrochemicals to a regenerative one i think we also need to move from a healthcare system that is focuses on immune suppressing or suppressive medications that block inhibit or anti something in our body to regenerative medicine which helps us to regenerate health and regenerate our immune systems and i think we have a long way to go but i think it's really an interesting moment in healthcare right now where we we really are seeing the need to actually do this absolutely absolutely and what we do to help with with preventing these issues can help our old, our whole body feel better yeah i mean I mean, even with covid19 there's you know, a lot of research going on around vitamin d vitamin yep. c and zinc. zinc and so these are just basic ideas that are not that hard to understand these nutrients are not expensive they're they're easy to access and i think we all could use a little boost right now given the state of our world the the covid pandemic and uh, and the increased stress for under so liz thank you so much for being again on the house call episode of the doctor's pharmacy it's been great to have you if you love this podcast we'd love to have you share with your friends and family on social media leave a comment tell us have you struggled with cold sores or canker sores and how have you dealt with it and of course subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and we'll see you next time on the doctor's pharmacy thank you mark 